I'm going to talk you through how to create a whirly bird. And a whirly bird is something we're going to work with in class. We're going to be studying a little bit of gravity, a whole lot of air resistance, and we're going to be able to uh, use the whirly birds to help us get where we want to go. So whirly bird, it's it's really kind of an engineering of paper. It's kind of you're, you want you're going to have you're going to take a piece of paper, you're going to cut it and fold it, and it's going to perform. And this is what we're going to call our whirly bird. So moving forward, I'll pretty much be referring to the whirly bird as WB. So whirly bird. And it's going to look something like this, right? When it's all said and done, you'll have taken a piece of paper and you'll have cut it and you'll have folded it and you will actually be placing a paper clip at the end right here. And this is going to help it, you know, fall towards the earth here. So, so here's what we have going on. You're going to cut along the, the lines on the outside. You'll cut the dashed lines. You'll make a couple folds, right? Fold the wings down and then you'll fold the body in half to, to double the, in this case right here, fold this and then fold here. So if I take uh, just a, a, a blank sheet of paper, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you do this, right? So you're gonna use some, I just say use recycled paper, I don't know, why not? Use some paper you're gonna throw away anyway. You're gonna create two or three different whirly birds that, can, that have different shapes and sizes. And these are gonna be what we call your experimental birds. Uh, these are what you're gonna be observing and collecting data on. You will be modifying these birds. Understand, you're gonna cut these, you're gonna fold these, you're gonna modify these, they are not in their final form. You're gonna place a paper clip at the bottom. That's what I just kind of mentioned here. And you'll drop it so that, make sure that as it falls towards the earth that, it's, that, it, that it twirls smoothly. I'm gonna emphasize twirling smoothly. And so, you know, get plenty of practice. One of the primary issues that students have is not having enough practice trials to observe in order to think through the modifications of their whirly bird. So you're gonna drop and observe 10 trials before you do anything. And essentially, once you're thinking about, you know, what is the whirly bird doing? Is it fluttering? Is it falling smoothly? Is it spinning a lot? Is it not spinning a lot? Um, you know, there's, there's different ways in which you're going to do your observations. And then you're going to make a change. For example, you're going to make the wings smaller by cutting them. And then I want you evaluating, well, how did this change influence the whirly bird? First off, let's, uh, let, let's I'm going to make a whirly bird for you. I want you to see this. So I've, I've got some scratch paper here. It's uh, pretty much useless, worthless, it's uh, pretty much uh, garbage paper. And um, I'm gonna cut it up. I'm gonna cut it up into this shape right here. So if I, you know, go ahead and start cutting on this paper here and I'm, you know, I'm cutting out the uh, corners here and see, so get this cutting here going and, uh, and uh, let's see here, voila. I have this piece of paper and this piece of paper here, I'm going to begin folding. Here I've got this folded, here's a fold, here's a fold, and here's my whirly bird. All right, I've got this whirly bird here, I fold the bottom, and I'm gonna put a place, place a paper clip on it. And here's one. So this one here would be large. This is a relatively large paper clip, uh, whirly bird. So there's my first whirly bird. So I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna create another one. I'm gonna create another one here, and I am going to then create a smaller one. So I'm gonna so just because it's the size, you don't have to make it the size. This is the pattern. This is simply the pattern in which you're going to cut a piece of paper so that you have this design at the end. Yeah, let me cut some more up here. And here's my second whirly bird. I'll place a paper clip on the bottom here. And so I have two. I have, a, I have a large one and a small one. And understand, these are going to be my kind of my practice trials. These are, I'm going to be using these to practice. So I want you making these, the, the paper evolve, right? You're engineering the paper. So that means you need to determine, well, what does a small one do compared to that of a large one? And then here's what you're going to do. You're going to collect some data and you're going to time how long, right? In seconds, you're simply timing how long it takes the whirly bird to fall from, say, I'll just say a ceiling to the floor, it doesn't, it, whatever this distance is. And you'll need to know that distance. In the classroom, we'll be dropping from, I don't know, about two meters. And you're going to collect five trials in the data columns um, below, down here. So we're going to be having a whirly bird competition. And you're going to have your whirly birds compete in the following four exercises. One, the most accurate. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little drawing of this here in just a few moments. Uh, secondly, you're going to do the most spins. Third, the longest in the air. Right? You want it to be in the air. So therefore, each of these three conditions, right? each of these three, have very, very specific characteristics of the whirly bird that are going to help accommodate to, to having something be very accurate. 
to having it have a, a, a lot of spins, to having it stay in the air. And these are all gonna look pretty different. You, you might be surprised at how different each of these birds to optimize these events, they're gonna look different. So that's where your engineering comes in. And lastly, you're gonna do a most creative, uh, like a designer coloration. So this data table is something you'll be able to complete, and we can do this one in class. So don't worry about this one here. But um, here's what, I'm gonna talk you through what, what it means to be for the most accurate. I wanna make sure you have an idea as to what it is you're gonna do. So we'll have students that are standing on either the classroom tables or the lab's desks. And you're gonna be standing here on a table and you're gonna hold your whirly bird at uh, some distance or some location, we'll, we'll know what that is. And you're gonna drop it and on the floor is literally going to be a bullseye, boom. And it's going to fall and you want it to hit the bullseye. So you're gonna to need to be able to have a whirly bird that something is gonna be about that, that whirly bird, some characteristics that's gonna be, allow it to be really, really accurate with when it falls. And notice, you'll have, we'll have another lab station. So if I look at uh, the most spins in the air, this paper, most spins in the air, right, uh, number two here, you'll have two students standing, kind of, we'll say that you're, you're, you're facing this direction, and you will have those two students kind of drop their whirly birds. They'll drop them from the same location. Right? Doesn't matter what I draw these as. And this one's gonna fall, and this one's gonna fall. And you're simply just gonna compare them. Which one of them spins the most, right, as they fall? So, and the winner's simply gonna stay. So this person may hopefully uh, step down, not jump off. And we'll have the next person up. And it's pretty much going to be the, the winner stays. So you want to bring in a whirly bird that has, that's going to be able to be dropped and have a really good accuracy. You're going to want to have one of the whirly birds dropped that's going to be able to spin, right? That's going to be a whole different design. And lastly, you're going to create another whirly bird here. Actually, not lastly, because you're going to do a creative one too. And you're going to have one that's going to stay in the air. Once again, you'll be competing against somebody who's also on a table. So it'll pretty much be one-on-one -on -one competition. And you'll stay until somebody beats you. And then we'll have, we'll, we'll generally do kind of a top three. And you'll be awarded, you'll be awarded candy. It's normally what I offer. Longest in the air. So you'll drop with this one. Here's one. It'll fall. And this person will drop this one. They'll drop it from the same height. I guess I could draw them from the same height. And as they both fall, the last one to hit the floor is the winner and that person will stay so let's say this one let's say uh this one's this one wins they'll stay this person gets down and another person gets up and they'll just drop it head to head so longest in the air you want it to have a particular design to it that's going to allow it to stay in the air for a long time so most accurate most spins longest in the air and lastly you're going to do one on the most creative design or coloration so sometimes you you people have a an affinity, a, a liking of doing something creative. So I can take this white piece of paper here, right, and I can make it all creative here. So I'm going to just fold it a little bit, and all of a sudden, oh, I've just created a, a, a colorful one out of that white piece of paper. I was able to create this uh, particular whirly bird here. So um, let's see. Let me grab another another piece of paper, see if I can create another one here. So, I mean, you're seeing it. So, And all of a sudden, oh, there we go. All right. It's... Uh, Oh, another colorful, creative one. So there's that one. And uh, let's see, I have another another piece of paper here. I'm gonna do one last third one. Oh, worked out nicely. See, there you go. And these will be something we'll vote on as a class and see if uh, see who's the uh, who's got the most colorful, creative kind of one that you put some time in. Um, so this one here is rooting for Al. It says go Al. So go Al. Woohoo!